First Kings 13 is one of the most bizarre chapters in the Bible. It's a time when the kingdom of Israel is divided, a time when the rebel Jeroboam rules over Israel and establishes an apostate religion there. But the Lord who sees all is watching, and he raises up someone identified only as a man of God to confront Jeroboam and pronounce judgment upon the men that he has appointed as priests. The man of God comes on the scene as Jeroboam is approaching the altar to burn incense. And this man of God prophesies two things. First, that a child named Josiah will be born into the dynasty of David, and that he, this child, will sacrifice the pagan priest on that very altar. And to prove the man of God's authority, the Lord promises a sign. This altar will split apart and its ashes will be poured out on the ground. Now this is where it gets really interesting. King Jeroboam screams and he points at the prophet and the king's hand is frozen into place. He can't pull it back. At the same time, the altar split just as the man of God predicted and the ashes poured out. After restoring the king's arm and refusing his hospitality, the man of God leaves Bethel to return to Judah. And as crazy as all of this is, there's much more to the story you'll have to read for yourself. But if you skip to the end of the chapter with me, verse 33 tells us, but even after this, Jeroboam did not turn from his evil ways. What's the moral of the story? God had promised Jeroboam blessing if he did right. But Jeroboam didn't walk with God, and his false religion caused the eventual downfall of the ten northern tribes. Even so, we will see that God was very patient, and the destruction of Jeroboam's dynasty was still years away. So what's this mean for you and I today? Don't mistake God's patience for his approval. God's patience never condones sin. Instead, it represents his kindness and it allows us time to turn from our sin.